What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode 74 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by the coolest dudes in video games, Colin Moriarty and Greg Miller. Lola's over here, too. Lola-ing around, as Lola, she does. Lola around. Lola, Lola, Lola gagging. Lola gagging? Lola gagging. Gotcha. Yeah, sounds sexy. It does sound. Yeah, yeah it does it. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. I, I'm, I'm with that. Anyways, this is the Kind of Funny Games cast. Each and every week, we get together to talk about video games and all the things we love. You can find it over on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, where every Monday through Thursday, a topic's broken out. And thanks to you, we're now over 200,000 subscribers. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, E3 was awesome. Got a lot of growth there. Put out a lot of videos. 65 videos. Oh, doctor. They all performed really well. You guys they surprised like you. They, it was surprising how well they performed. Um, that was awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please give us feedback. Let us know what you want more of or less of next year at E3. And for just conventions going forward like this. There's not too many things like E3, but there's Paris Games Week, Gamescom. Sure. I think I'd like to do uh, the talking over the press conference bits. Oh, nice. Because yeah, people, people like that, that a lot. Like that, yeah. And, um... You know, if something crazy happens, like Crash Bandicoot, you know, you get that reaction being announced. And then you get me freaking the fuck out. It was out. a really funny thing. It was really good. It was. Oh my God. It was an excellent E3. Yeah. I came, I was thinking about it last night. I couldn't sleep. I was just like, man, last week, E3 yeah. happened. It happened. It happened. And when it was we're, amazing. When we were driving, it was best E3 when we were years. driving out to the airport, we drove past the convention center. And I just had that deep sigh, like, it's over. It happened so fast and it all went smoothly for the most part. It was yeah. Great. No, it was great. I mean, I, I can't believe all the announcements, all the trailers, all the everything. I thought it was just like a, it revitalized E3 for me. I mean, I, I'm always in love with E3, but like yeah. this year I was just like, yeah, this yeah. shit ain't going nowhere. This I, shit's here to stay. I gotta say, with the talking over the, the, the talking over the press conference thing was the only thing I didn't like doing because I felt like I was being watched watching something else. Like I was if I was in a you focus were. group. I didn't like it. Because like I like to like take my notes. Yeah. Because people like look at like I have the same when I'm watching something or listening or paying attention to something. I have the same static look on my face and not sad or happy. I'm just indi I'm indifferent. I'm listening, and everyone's like, look at how sad or disappointed Colin. I'm just trying to listen to what they're saying to me. So I, you cracked a smile when I freaked out. No, no, I didn't. Like Greg, who just sat there stoic and then talked <sighs> shit. Great. Immediately. Crash Bandicoot. Man. Yeah, we can't wait for more. We can't wait to play those three games. They Let's very run well. the camera uh, some more. I'm not even going to do it. Uh, I, 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 do, I am interested just a bit, uh, as a tangential kind of thing with the Crash remasters. They said from the ground up. I don't believe for a second that those games are being remade. I think a lot of people think that like they're like they're going to be given the ratchet and clank treatment. No, it's not. It's not. There's been no. there's been a lot of rumblings, a lot of interviews going off here and there, like random little sources. He said from the ground up. That's a direct quote, but it's not. What they're doing is it. they're going in like they did with the Uncharted section where it is being remade from the ground up like game wise, but it's not. Ratchet and Clank. It is just a up res. We'll probably get the widescreen. I'm hoping for an orchestrated soundtrack. Like how are they going to do? I wonder thing. how they're even going to do widescreen. This is what I'm interested in. Like how they can't. I don't know they're going to be able to do it. Yeah, you know? it'll be interesting to see. No reason to. All you do is run straight at the camera the whole not goddamn true. game. That's not. That's, You're right. Sometimes the camera's behind you. Yeah. You run down a very small corridor a and you jump. It, you're and you get running blown up. To right. You yeah, guys. You know. You've made me. You've convinced me that these aren't good games. But then I'm like, no. Fuck. You guys are wrong. You guys okay. are straight up wrong about this. Okay. I've been like. The, the internet is ablaze with excitement for these games, and when of they come back, they're ablaze for the. The internet's very easy to please. No, it's and not. Very easy to please with or these big announcements in so many ways. Sure, and, and, they'll, are, and when they come out and mm -hmm. they play them again, then you see the other side. No, nah, they, they, these are fine. If all the the classic platformers of the the Super Nintendo Genesis era can stand up, like the the Disney games and all the other floating games that are fucking awesome, this shit stands up too. Like, are they? Is it Mario? No, it's not Mario. No, of course, it's not Mario. Yeah, no, but, but it's fucking. Awesome. But you have to be careful with the like what you ask for with these games too. With like, um, I was not always, but when Mega Man Nine was released, I I, I thought to myself, I'm like, why isn't this in widescreen? Then of course it changes the whole balance of the gameplay. Like the bullets stay on the screen longer, and so you can't fire quicker and stuff like that. So there's got to be reason. Like, and the game's rendered in a specific way. I don't know that they're gonna be able to get those games in a widescreen unless they zoom in or something. Um, which they're not gonna be able to do either. So I, I, I think I think, think what you're gonna get is up part comes in. I think on. you're gonna get. I think you're gonna get. But they're made within the frame of the. Uh, I don't know. I, I've this ex, the, the excitement about Crash Bandicoot. I'd never. I never understood Crash Bandicoot. So I'm not going to pretend like a I lot do of now, people do. Well, clearly, All three of them. He had a, in 1998, 1999, yeah, he had games. a higher Q score than Mario, um, which was a significant thing back in the day. It still is significant, but way more significant back then. That he he had a. Everyone knew who Crash Bandicoot was. So I was definitely in the minority on that. Those games sold huge. But I I just feel like. To the point about new Crash Bandicoots, which you're never going to get unless this sells very well. So people should go support this put this, shit. their money this, down on these. This days. is exactly what I wanted. I've spoken about this many times now, but like I didn't. I don't want a Crash Four yet. I want these 
to come out. I want the remaster to the three good games. You want them revitalized. You want them back in public let's opinion. Get this people thing care back about them. Pe- have people understand what makes Crash special, special, and then go forward and give us a new one then. Because, or else we're just going to get a new Crash and it's going to suck. We all know that that would just suck. Yeah. So um, there was a, a great like documentary video essay that just came out. Look it up on YouTube. It's Crash Bandicoot, Decline of an Icon, I think it's called. It came, came out in the last week. And uh, Surprised dude, you even watch it. Forgot his name. What do you mean? What? You're such, you just keep drinking the Crash Kool Aid. Surprised you even I'm watch this. No goddamn Crash Kool Aid. The truth. It's, it's awesome. It's like a 15 minute thing that kind of dissects what happened to Crash and why it went from good games to horrible games. Yeah. And I really, really fascinating stuff. And I didn't realize how well the original Crash game sold. Oh, all yeah, three, all three games, top 10 mm-hmm. best selling PlayStation 1 games. All three of them sold more than Final Fantasy 7. Mm hmm. Bam. There was a big deal. Over 10 million copies sold, I think. Mm-hmm. The, the, yeah, Crash Bandicoot was huge. They turned those games around really quickly, too. And the other thing, too, as they did back then. the other thing that this video reminded me, and I, as I, I played a little bit this weekend, I was I had to. There was a jittery about sure. the whole thing. Everyone's like, oh, Crash, it's this 90s relic and stuff. The, like, marketing was a 90s relic. Crash himself is like a Looney Tune thing. He's sure. like goofy and aloof and stuff. He's not like, I'm fucking rad and cool. Like, yeah, his like, idol pose, he does the DX Crash the shop. DX thing. He's but wearing, besides he's that, he's wearing jorts. He's more just kind of like, not knowing what's going on and like weird and kooky and wacky and like animated with all of his stuff. It's it's not like he's like this fucking too cool for school. That was Sonic in the adventure days. Yeah. Sonic adventure days for sure. For sure. Just yeah. reiterate that. Um anyway. Anyways. Moving on to other great, you know, successors to games. We all loved Mega Man, right? Let's talk about Mighty Number no. Nine. Colin, what do you think about it? Um I think that it's not good. And I think that um, I think that was I think it was pretty obvious it wasn't going to be good for a while. Actually, I, I think we just kind of avoided the reality of the game for a while. Um, I think that the first time I played it, which was years ago now, I knew that it wasn't going to be like this fantastic game. Uh, but I remember the first time you played it, you came back and you said it doesn't, it isn't Mega Man. It's different. It's this. It's more action based. Yeah, it's not Mega Man, and and that's and that I think is a disappointing kind of thing. Um, you know, a friend of ours from Deep Silver, who's uh, work, you know they obviously published the game, tweeted out today that he was disappointed with some people's reviews, which I understand. I mean, but saying that like people are expecting, are docking the game for not being Mega Man or whatever, and I'm like, well, no offense, but the game was marketed and funded as a successor to Mega Man, so we do expect the Mega Man game. I mean, I I don't I don't know like how else to put that, and there's some. There's some features of the game that are Mega Man esque, such as the nonlinearity and the and you get the bosses' weapons and stuff like that. But um, the game is just a soulless husk. It doesn't feel like anything. It doesn't look like anything. It just it looks cheap. It looks amateurish. It has uh, voice acting is fucking awful. The the um, storytelling is silly. They they had a chance to rectify what the technical limitations of the NES Mega Man games wouldn't allow them to do, which is to tell a cool story and have cool bosses and uh, which were, and, and, and it's so weird that like these 8-bit Mega Man games just shit on this game, just shit on it. And from a graphical aesthetic, like Mega Man games have an identity, especially with like two and three and moving on from those games. Like they look like Mega Man games. They have a feel, they have uh, enemy diversity, they have geographic diversity, it's this 2.5D graphics garbage that makes that that really hurts my number nine, I think. And also, I think that it's just it's easy uh, for the most part. There is one part of the game that we can talk about that's ridiculous, but it's easy. It, it, it It's it's score based. It's all these kinds of things. So I just I don't the more I play it, as I tweeted out yesterday, the more I play it, the more I don't like it. I never liked it uh, beyond the the mere fa- act of playing because I think there's a good gameplay hook there. I just don't understand how this is Mega Man. I don't understand how this is a successor to Mega Man. I don't understand how this this was funded to g- scratch the Mega Man itch. It doesn't. Colin, mm. you just got Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. Yeah. I didn't think it would happen. <laughs> Usually it's me that, you know, wants these, ga- these games that we all know are going to be bad to be good, but mm-mm. Yeah, this I time th- it's you. How does it feel? I mean, it feels, it feels bad because... It feels bad, man, because... <laughs> Well, that's what I was saying on on Twitter, and I, I had reflected to a few people where I'm like, "This is it." Like, I, I've I've kind of come to accept this is the game. This is the game that they worked on for years. That Far I feel that I feel like could have been made as a fucking school project by some programmers and some animators in uh, 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 you know at USC. Like, that's the I, thing, I, right? We like, see so many indie games at PAX that are doing Mega Man better than this does. Or yeah, doing this kind of game, even if we don't, if you want to take Mega Man out of the equation, doing this kind of game better. Like I just, the more I look at it, I just, I don't hate it, and I don't think it's bad. I just think it's so mediocre and so unremarkable 
that it's amazing that it came out of any creates which is a studio that makes fucking fantastic games and that it came out of Inafune's mind which is a, a man that design you know helped design Mega Man design all these robots and this gameplay and um, helped produce some of the great Capcom franchises of the more recent years like Animusha and Dead Rising like he's no slouch and I don't understand how this game came out the way it did and the way it and the way it looks and it makes me scared for these other 2.5 D revivals like like Iga's uh, ritual uh, uh, Bloodstained, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night although I think that, that game is going to be way better and that game was playable and people at either and people did like it I didn't get a chance to play it um, so I don't know I just think that Mighty Number no. Nine is a ma- I mean, what it is is it's a fucking huge disappointment and uh, it's just it's just so like I said it's just unremarkable it's just so bland and boring I just don't care about it now I don't that, even care about now it now that you've moved to acceptance what does it mean for Inafune as a creator what does this mean for Recore what does this mean for that other game the Red Storm or whatever is it oh Red Ash Red Ash um so I don't know anything about that, like Red Ash or whatever. I saw Record E3, and I think it looks fine. I think it looks again, it looks it very look, generic. It, yeah, I was gonna say, does it look like Mighty Number no. Nine looked? Yeah, in a way. I mean, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's different. It's an open. No, no, I don't mean does it. Look, I mean, does it actually look? I mean, like, are you getting the same vibes of this? Yeah, isn't I think. Be a I, great think game. I mean, they're only charging forty dollars for it, which I am pretty sure was not their intention the entire time. Uh, I think that maybe it was, but I doubt it. Um, Record looks fun, but it looks just generic. So. You look at like Inafune's other games, like Soul Sacrifice, I think was fine. It was good. It's just like, where is the magic? That's the kind of the question I have. And, and a lot of people are asking, you know, you've asked and, and it's brought up like, is Inafune, does Inafune suffer for this? Yes. Like, you can't take away what he's done. And the, and the and he's a great man. Like, I, I, I remarked uh, when I was at E3 that it's so weird. He knows who I am. He comes up to me and shakes my hand and all this kind of thing. I love him. Like, like he's a like, nice man and he's like, a, and he means well and he's doing his best. But as a creator, like we expected more from him. And I feel like this game being pitched as a Mega Man successor, being pitched as some sort of Mega Man esque, some sort of spiritual game like Mega Man, it's just not. It's just not Mega Man. I don't I don't see what in this, other than he pew pew pews out of an arm cannon and uses enemy attacks, is Mega Man. You know, like the enemy attacks are fucking lame. You know, like the 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 user interface is bad. The I, I just I just I don't know. I, I just don't understand like how any, especially with any crates. I don't understand how any crates made this game. Any crates made Mega Man Nine and Mega Man Ten. Those are fucking awesome, and they're indistinguishable from the old Mega Man games. Like that's how good they are. Like you would not be able, as I said before, I think on PS I Love, if you mix those games up with the exception of the first one, which definitely looks like the first one. But if you mix up two, three, four, five, six, nine, and ten, and said to a person who just knows games but doesn't know Mega Man, or just doesn't know anything about games, find the two that were made in the 21st century. They wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, like that's how that's how awesome those games are. And uh, they make they make Gunvolt, which is a great new franchise, and they make Galgun, and they and and then they and they're working on Ritual of the Night and all these games, and then they make this turd. You and know, so the like, only thing you can point to being the problem is Inafune. You think? I feel like I I mean when you look at it, I mean I don't know. It's just like when you look at it with Comcepts, which Inafune's company is Comcepts. Like any creates has a great track record. Comcept doesn't. So like at some point. You have to kind of call it out as is what it is. I don't think Deep Silver did the game any 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 favors, obviously, with its fucking awful trailer um, and its lack of messaging about what was going on with the game during its delays. I think they totally dropped the ball there too, and I think that's obvious to everyone. But um, the game is the game is the game is the game, and it's going to sell or not based on the merits of the game and it's and it's word of mouth and it has bad word word of mouth and it and it earned it. It's not bad. Like I said, the gameplay hook there is cool. The idea of shooting enemies and then quickly dashing through them to gain multipliers or whatever and keep your killing them or whatever. It's cool. It's, it's a nice idea. Um, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Like there's like, I feel like there's like 10 different enemies in the game. I feel like there's like no enemy diversity. I feel like that every, everywhere looks the same. It looks empty and static. These 3d gra- these 2.5d graphics suck. Yeah. You know, like, and, yeah. and there are games that look pu- beautiful in that aesthetic. I know that that aesthetic is cheaper to make and that's why they do it. That's why they don't do 2d flat 2d with sprites and hand drawn things. Like I, I understand all of that, but the game suffers as a result, and I know the game didn't raise enough money to to be able to do that art. I know Ego said the same thing, and they raised way more money for for Ritual of the of the Night. So I don't know. I'll be interested to see like what like it's only now getting into people's hands as we record this, and I'm interested to see like what pe- if people disagree with the critics because the critical reception of the game is bad. And um, even Sonic's talking shit. Even Sonic's talking shit, which I thought was like I thought Sonic's tweet was both the Sonic the Hedgehog tweet was both funny and in super bad taste. Yeah, especially because Sonic the Hedgehog categorically sucks. 
So like I don't know. Yeah, that, but that's what his social account is. That's like, the whole thing. Follow that him. That he has embraced that. He has so. embraced that. Yeah, like yeah. so. And, and, but and I I mean it's just like I know that. But at the same time, it's like I don't know. It just seems a little tasteless to make for a developer or a studio to sanction making fun of anyone else, um, especially when you're Sonic. But that's but that's but that's my that's See, my Lego take dimensions here too, especially when you're Sega and you're falling off a fucking cliff. So and if, wasn't for, and if it wasn't for Atlas, Sega's be been totally falling off relevant. a cliff for so long though that that's just their <laughs> modus operandi at this point. That's all they know. That's yeah. their world. So I don't know. So to me, it's it's um, it's disappointing, and, I, and I'm sad for me, but I'm also really sad for people that were looking forward to this. There were a lot of people, there are millions of people really that seemed to be oh, looking yeah. forward to this game. And when that Kickstarter went off, everyone who was in that was that. I mean, people. I don't know if your mem- memories span that long but like that was like the first real video game kickstarter that came around where everybody's like this could be the future if a creator you want breaks away they could go do this obviously double fine found their success yeah. but i'm talking about somebody coming out and being like fuck it i'm gonna make a game i'm gonna make the game i'm known for and i'm gonna do it without anybody in my way and, and everybody's like yes amazing here yeah. you go i was there in the room when he announced it at the at pax during the panel and i remember everybody lost their shit and again granted when you're in a PAX panel, people get excited yeah. about stuff. But even the the people who were at IGN, like that was one of those things. Where, like we need to do a conversation right now. Get this up. This is news. And then I remember that video did like it was the highest performing video of the entire show. Yeah, which just shows the power of that that type of announcement. Being then, the first among Kickstarters, where now you can't get anyone to cover your Kickstarter with a ten foot pole. Exactly. Uh, so, if you could take a step back, if you weren't a Mega Man fan, do you think that this game holds up at all? No, because I I think I just think it again. It's unremarkable. Like, why would you play it? In other words, if it has no, if you have no, if you have no connection to Mega Man or Inafune or Cap old Capcom games, of which were some of the best games ever made at the time, then why would you play this at all? Because it it doesn't. It's just it's just not fun. It's like not. The idea is that the gameplay is fun enough and fluid enough to play. But I ask the question, why? Like I'm even asking my question, like why? Like these characters suck. <laughs> Beck sucks, you know. Like Call sucks. The doctors suck. Like, <laughs> like, at, like. There's, there's just, there's just no heart and soul. The game doesn't have a heart and soul. So as fun as it is to play, it's like playing. Like I love Civilization because it, it, it's fun to play. And there's like these reasons. And I know it's a jump for for a PC strategy game, but there's like this, this, this huge reason to play the game, to learn it, to like understand it. Because there's like all of these different threads that make it worth playing. But when you jump into Mighty Number no. Nine. The only reason you would play it is because Inafune made it. Otherwise, I don't feel like, and again, I don't want to say the game's bad because I think that like bad games speak for themselves and I don't think this game's bad. I just think it lacks everything that makes a game good. It's just mediocre. It just exists. It's just there. And Inafune can do better and any creates can definitely do better. Back to my point that Deep Silver is filling that void that THQ left of like, here are all these mid-tier games that you have no real reason to care about, but they're there. Homefront. My number nine. Yeah, like if I had, I mean, I've only played if I only played my number nine a few, a couple stages, and I thought it was fine. I thought it was fun, and I was excited to see the whole game. I was excited to get back into these robot master type enemies and like to get the lore and really learn about the world and stuff. But if I had Deep Silver, only got involved with the game late, and if I was playing the game, if I had access to the full build and I played the game, I'd be like, no way in hell are we publishing this. So. Like, I don't see what, what they were seeing or what they thought like this game was going to be. Maybe there's just a lot of money to be made. Again, the money, the game was paid for. Just so, the ability to work within a food. Yeah. People are going to buy it out of morbid curiosity. Mega Man fans like you had already b- pre-ordered they were in. Yeah, so I, I, I feel it's hard. It's like, it's hard because you, I want, there's no game I wanted to be great more than this. And um, this tells me that we need to take a step back from our nostalgic points of view about that. If we're going to get these new games, they need to be done right they need to be done the right way or they're going to ruin w- how we feel about the games to begin with. And I really feel like any creates and Capcom nailed it with Mega Man 9 and Mega Man 10 of which Inafune produced those games. So it the troubling thing to me is like Inafune and I don't presume to know the ins and outs of his situation in Japan and the situation. It seems like he burned so many bridges and obliterated so many mores of the Japanese gaming culture and the way Japanese games are made that it's like is he able to now go back to a publisher Mm -hmm. and like is he would Capcom take him back like could he get his 20 million dollar budget to make a real Mega Man game could like these fences be mended so we can get the Inafune that we know and love and perhaps like that's what he he needs to be under that umbrella or is it like is he like Persona is he, is, yeah, exactly. Is he like he does he have the scar letter now because he did all these things and people wanted to see him fail? And I wonder if people in Japan are happy that my number nine is not good. 
you know, and I don't mean the gamers. I mean like the people in the industry and maybe some sure, gamers sure. who felt like he scorned them and their way of doing things. So there's a lot of like deeper questions than just the game. I think with Mighty Number no. Nine about like where does concept go from here? Red Ash was a failure in terms of like getting the, I think the anime Kickstarter was like all mixed up and fucked up like in yeah. there and and the way they're getting like there just seems to be a lot of confusion about where Inafune and Comstep stand. And I think Mighty Number no. 9 is emblematic of that confusion because Mighty Number no. 9 is in of itself a confused game that doesn't know if it wants to be Mega Man or not. And it, it dips its toe in the water and that's fine. But dude, you know what we want. So just give it to us or don't pretend that you can. That's all. Mm. That's 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 the long and the short of it. And um, for, for the fun, fluid, score-based gameplay and all that kind of stuff that's there, there's no reason to play it. It's like playing on a gray screen with nothing interesting, you know, and I do want to say one of the worst design parts of a game I've seen in a long time is in, is in Mighty Number no. 9 late in the game. And I, I was talking about it a little bit on Colin and Greg Live and I just get I just I'll go back to it. I'm just like, fuck this. And I just start playing Grand Kingdom instead because it's just it's just a way better game. Um, you get to this point in a robot factory like late in the game. The game's not some people are complaining that the game's hard. I don't think the game's hard at all. Like, by the way, I, I think that like I my one of my complaints about Shovel Knight was that it was too easy. This game's even easier than Shovel Knight. So I don't know. Like, I think people are just losing their chops a little bit, but there's one part of the game. Oh, you never had them. There's this one part of the game where I was like, where the difficulty spikes from nothing to extraordinary and it's obnoxious. And so there's a part in a factory where you have to use a dash ability over these like insta kill spike pink spike things where you drop down, then then zoom right, drop down, zoom left, drop down, zoom right, zoom right, zoom right and get out of there or whatever. And I actually did it once and then I beat the boss and then I died after that. So I had to go do it again. But sounds like a terrible checkpoint. But there's no checkpoint there. Like you have to go back like two minutes before that or whatever, which is not fine. And and what's so weird because Mighty Number no. Nine is like super fucking generous with checkpoints and lives and power ups and like the E tank type things they have in there. Like it's just like the game like wants you to beat it. And um there's so the idea of the game is moving fast. Gotta gotta move fast. Right? Gotta, gotta, go, gotta fast. go fast. Gotta go fast. Yeah. And the idea is going fast. So there's this part of the game, like so the mighty numbers, the the mighty number one through eight are the enemies that you beat already. And they're your friends like you reprogram them and they become your friends and they appear on stages at various times. And so there's this conversation where you're jumping up and like three of them are talking to each other and two of them are in the background and they're like chattering or whatever and everything's fine. But you're moving fast. So by the time you get to the point where you're supposed to drop, there's the of you mighty number whoever the fuck cares is like over <laughs> over the screen and he's blocking you. And since he's talking to you, he stays over your character model as he's talking. You just want to move. And then there's black boxes with text on the bottom and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like. So am I supposed to just sit here for 20 seconds on a speed run waiting for this to pass? Or am I supposed to be able to see through the fucking character and then through the, the, the boxes of text so that I can do this part, which I'm going to die because you're distracting the shit out of me. I was like, who designed this? This is awful. Like, I was like, this is just stupid. Like, why is this happening on screen at this fucking pivotal moment in time when I'm trying to beat the game quickly? And you're challenging me with a huge ramp up in difficulty. I was like, this is super symbolic of this of what the fuck is going on in this game. Who designed this? Dumb question. You can't turn it off. Is it one of those things for speed runs? You can go into the menus. And I don't know. Man. I don't. I have no idea. It doesn't matter to me. Like the point is, is that I'm playing the game normal game. My normal first playthrough, sure. trying to just beat it over and over again. You get really good at that part before that before that because you're doing it 20 fucking times trying to get through that part. And these characters are on the screen bombarding you with fucking sensory overload. Mega Man, Mega Man. Yeah. And it's like, I'm like, who designed this? <laughs> yeah, we got this is bad. Y. You know? Yeah, maybe if you play EX mode or something like that, they remove a lot of stuff. The point is that like no one's going to play that their first time through and you're going to fight and you're going to encounter this thing and you're just going to be standing there waiting for them. To, you're going to figure out after one or two times that the character is literally hovering over you because he's talking to you. It's like, who designed this? You know? And that was, that, that to me is, that was when I was like, fuck this. I'm putting this down. I don't even like, and people were telling me like, don't even, you don't even like, don't, you know, you always say don't be up a game's ass. You don't have anything to prove. And I'm like, I just want to, I need to beat this game, you know, like to just see it through. But the fact that they have ambitions for a sequel and stuff like that, like, yeah, good luck. You know, like you have, you better blow this entire game up and do it all over again. If you want to have any chance of having a sequel that anyone cares about, mm. because it's wrong on almost every level. It's just too bad. They can take that gameplay and put it in another game with different, and there would be expectations would be different, but our expectations are totally set. If, if we have a problem as the insinuation has been that we are expecting Mega Man, then that's your fucking problem because you are the one who promised us a Mega Man successor. Yeah. And we are not getting it. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pissed about my number nine, but I also am conflicted about it. Knowing Inafune as a man, not that we're friends or whatever, but knowing who he is, knowing the content of who he is and like how funny he is and how kind he is and all those kinds of things. It's hard to say like you fucked up. But I don't know who else who else's problem would be. I don't think it's I, I don't think any creates is the problem. 
You know, like I just don't I don't know about that. So we'll find out when Bloodstain comes out and Galgun and all those kind of games and we play them and if they're bad then they're bad. Then well, we I mean, Galgun's gonna be Galgun. Yeah. But I'm giving this girl an orgasm with a gun. It's, that's a, that's that's the game. <laughs> game of the year. So anyway, um if it's not expensive, so if you have a morbid curi- morbidly curious about it then you know, more power to you, but, but that's I would, definitely a game that'll be on a discount sale in no time. Oh my gosh, yeah, so yeah, hold yeah. your horses on that one. Yeah, and it's on like every system ever too. So yeah, and they and to keep, their credit, they made for that PlayStation Vita version. And, yeah, which we haven't gotten. And to 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 their credit, they did. He is taking a lot of the blame. I mean, they did what was supposed to be a celebratory kind of stream that seemed he seemed super dejected and sad and was saying like you know bl- people blame me, you blame me, it's my fault and all this kind of stuff basically. And, I, and I'm and I'm paraphrasing, um, but. Kotaku's got it all broken up. Yeah, you guys can go read it there. Mm. Polygon, I mean, scoops. It's sad. It's ultimately it's sad. So, you know, hopefully, if they do a mighty number nine two or whatever they call it, um, it's way better than this. But this game, in no way, shape, or form, deserves a sequel. Not even close. Next up, I want to talk about Zelda. We never Breath got a chance to. The we, we never all got to talk about Zelda after As we all group. saw Zelda. We yes. talked about it. We did the. But it was the before I saw play. it. It's before oh, I went. Okay, I played cool. it afterwards. Oh, you did too. Yeah, awesome. we've all played Zelda. Tell me what you guys thought. I liked it. Uh, I wish the demo was a bit more like, all right, you're into this section now, and here's how it's going to work when you talk to people. Let's talk to a Gorgon or whatever, and go do something like that. Instead, it was you know the. The, all right, you're just in this air, open area for 15 minutes, run around, figure out the controls, and then start from pretty much the start of the game and play through. And so I had to leave a little bit early, so I did the first thing where I got the spire out of the ground, and then I had a jet or whatever. Mm-hmm. But enjoyed what I played. Like, I'm excited for that game. I do want to play Zelda. Uh, it seems like it's interesting. I like the idea of how Link just wakes up after being asleep for, what is it, hundreds of years? They even say years, I think. 100 years. You wake up there, and you're, like, ready to roll out and go, and you got a little tablet, and you're putting it in everything. Okay, tablets are dumb. Wii U tablets dump, but whatever, whatever. I'm there. I'm ready. Uh, the thing I like about the tablet is I was worried about that when I first saw it. And there was rumors on the internet over the last like year or whatever since they showed that first image where you saw it. Yeah. And uh, it it worried me that I'm like, oh, great. This is definitely going to be gamepad. Yeah, yeah, You know, it's going to be a huge part of it. No, I think it's just more of an aesthetic agree. thing. Agree. 100% it, it's agree. just a fancy looking map. Yeah. So it's like, all right, cool. Doesn't seem like there's going to be more functionality than that. So yeah, that's exciting. No, I enjoyed what I saw. The fire effects looked cool. I like the idea of cooking food and doing all that stuff. I like the idea of it being an open world Zelda. I mean, it won't be, obviously, I think it was pretty clear it won't be as uh, fulfilling or as dense as Witcher or as Skyrim or anything like that, but I'm still down. Okay, cool. I'm going to climb up there, and then I'm going to jump on my shield and ride it down like a surfboard. But that's awesome. Yeah, I think that's the, the most exciting to me is that the all the physics-based stuff, and I, I like that it is just kind of a big sandbox, and it's less open world in the traditional sense yeah. of like, there, here's a whole bunch of different tasks for you to do, and it is more like the original Zelda, where it's just go. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of different stuff. You kind of figure out what you want to do. And uh, I like that the you can cut down the trees, and they fall in different ways, so there's the physics there, but then, yeah, also you can get on the, the shield and use it as a snowboard. Um, to go down the the hills and stuff. And it's just like, it's one of those games that makes you think, can I do that? Let me try. Oh shit, I can. Yeah. And that's cool because it's been a while since I've experienced something like that, especially in a Zelda game. Zelda games have been so kind of just, you know, rinse and repeat, same thing over and over, which is why I'm happy that the demo wasn't what you're talking about. Where sure. It's like, here, you're in a dungeon, go do the thing. It's, it's just that it's left me with this feeling, right? Where I enjoyed the demo, but I really haven't thought about it since then. I really? Didn't, I don't, I didn't find the demo remarkable or mind-blowing like it's 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 fun sure yeah i'm totally in for another zelda i want to play another zelda but i haven't been sitting here being like man that was an awesome part and i want to play that but i want to go do that man i i got the demo excited me but what got me really going is afterwards like after post e3 being able to look at everyone else's demos and everyone else's gameplay footage yeah. that they posted and just reading about it the stuff that i didn't see because the demo is huge is crazy there's so many different weapons you can pick up you can use any weapon that the enemies drop and stuff right. in in my demo i got to use the little magnet Thing yeah, a little bit. What I didn't know is that you can the magnet attaches to anything metal, including your weapon. So you can throw your sword, pull out the magnet thing, attach it to the sword, and then use your sword as a fucking like far away sword. Oh, far away sword. Yeah, yeah. better reach on your sword. That's sure. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, that's super cool. That, like, you can do stuff like that. Because that seems like something that would be out of limitations. You know. Yeah. One hundred percent. So that's super exciting, and I, I like the. Just kind of the the system where there's the stamina. Yeah. So it's like you can climb anything, you can go anywhere, you can run whatever you want, but it's, or swim or whatever. But it it's all based on the the time of that. And obviously, as the game goes on, I'm sure you get, get more. Longer, yeah, yeah, you like level it up. I think that's a really smart way to kind of contain the world and have it be open and very non linear, and you know you can kind of go wherever you want straight from the start. Yeah. 
while still limiting you from like going to the final I agree with that 100%. Right like I, I think it's a really cool idea where it was too where I you know at one point I jumped in and I into the water and I started swimming and he's like I don't ever gonna make it the guy next to me and then I'm like I'll make it and then I died I was like well next time and I couldn't do it then I'm like oh, all right well I'm not supposed to reach that now you know mm-hmm. what I mean like it's clearly teaching me I'm not supposed to be doing that right now and that's how you figure it out yeah and I also like that it's it's Zelda enough and it's also different enough to keep me interested and be like oh shit like they they they're giving us what we asked for Really? See, I feel like that's what I'm going to get when I sit down and play with it and go through a straight playthrough. But yeah, when I for this gameplay demo, it felt like, okay, cool. This is what I was looking for, and I think it's I think it's pretty. I don't think it's like gorgeous. I think I think there's not a lot happening in the environments. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, people have been arguing about this online if the game's beautiful or not. I think the art style is beautiful. I like the world of it, but it is definitely you know sparse environments in yeah. certain sections and da da da. I mean, it's every last gen overall. The yeah. sparse environment thing, I'm not too hung up on because no, I'm I not hung like- up on any of it. None of this is like oh. Yeah. Fuck this game. It's just like, oh, I don't know. I, I, cause I, I would rather there not be stuff than just, all right, here's NPCs that, are, that have nothing really to say, but they're there. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. I like that it's, it is more like the wilderness. There isn't people just everywhere. Sure. You know? Yeah. That makes and sense. I like that it is, it, it kind of just, everything feels like it doesn't necessarily need to tell you a story, but there's a story to be made if you want there to be. And right. I like the little pirate coves or whatever, where it's like there's enemies and I, the, there's a hundred shrines to go find and all that stuff. And I like that it's like, that stuff feels more important when there's not a bunch of random shit going agreed. on. Agreed. Agreed you know? with that 100%. When you jump on the map and you see how huge the map is, but you look at a section, you see all the different skulls and treasure chests like, oh, I can totally see this being a Ubisoft game or a Shadow of Mordor where I set off and I'm going to go one by one to the, uh, yeah, I'll get to the story or whatever, but I'm going to instead go try to clear out all these different things. Mm-hmm. I just, I like that it's a, it's a really different approach and the whole, the weather system and having to use the different like uh, clothes and yep. different armor and yep. all that stuff. To Giving you on. a reason to change. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of annoying because I was always a blue tunic link. No, of course. Yeah, once I got that water, that. once I got that water tunic, I was rocking it all the he time. He looks dope as fucking his armor, though. Yeah, he does look cool. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up. What about you, Cole? Um, I played it for about 15 minutes. Uh, now, the the big caveat for me is that the, and this is fucking tone deaf Nintendo shit, is that you can invert the Y axis in the in the demo. So, like, I could not play the game effectively, like, at all. Um, and. So I was like really struggling because I play inverted. So I was like really struggling. And this happens every so often, like where a demo is like, no, we, you can't invert. Why? I'm like, you guys made a huge blunder on that one because we ex- we do exist. Um, We're breeding you out. And uh, so based on what I saw, so I tried to like just play it, uh, keeping the camera kind of like level um, so that I didn't have to think about it too much. And uh, what I found was a game that I, that intrigued me a great deal. Um, and uh, I liked going into the menus and kind of you could tell how much more robust the game is not by the world necessarily, but by the menus Sure. Um, that there's like a deep, um, deep, there's a deep equipment currency in this game in terms of like, you have lots of armor. There are lots of weapon choices, um, equipment and gear. And like, like it, to me, it was like, this is a real role playing game. This, this almost feels like a Zelda Zelda's actually a real role playing game. I mean, it, we used to refer to Zelda as being a role playing game or having role playing game elements, but it really doesn't. It's really an action adventure game in its own way. It's a, it's a Zelda game. It's a Zelda game. Um, there's a little bit of nonlinearity. You find that like link to the past. There's a little bit of like, obviously you're finding equipment. You can buy, find things and not find things or heart pieces. So there's a lot of collectibles and, and optional things. So the, the, the spirit's always been there, but it's never literally been a role playing game in my mind. Um, and this seems to be with its Skyrim influence or it's open world, Western role playing game influence, which is obvious. Um, and I'm glad that they finally looked outside and found that other people were doing their games better that they took that in. So when I was running around just for that brief time, fighting enemies and kind of just exploring this wooded area, this sparsely wooded area. I found that it was, it was a, I agree. I think the art is really pretty. I think the direction is really pretty. The game is super dated looking. Anyone who thinks that that game isn't dated looking, I don't know if we're looking at different games, but like the gameplay, it looks like a PlayStation three game. I mean, you know, like for sure. It looks Does like you're doing that. Yeah. Oh yeah. People, oh, yeah, got, yeah, oh, yeah, people oh, yeah. bristle yeah. when you say that, of course. Oh yeah, dude. Um, I said that when I, I, I tweet out, I was like, I played Zelda. It looks super dated, but I think it looks fun. I'm, I'm excited to play it and I am, I'm going to play it. I'm going to play that game. Um, but uh, people got really mad about that. And I'm like, dude, I just saw the game with my own fucking two eyes. Like it, it looks like it, it was made five, six years ago, like for sure. So, um, but that doesn't matter. The content of the game, I feel like is going to be there. Um, and it made me intrigued about Zelda. I've been really down on Zelda because Skyward Sword, uh, just from what I saw, I didn't feel it. And Twilight Princess is the real, the real game. I really got my uh, real mainline console game from the series that I really got my, my hands on, on. And was like, I just don't like this game. And with, um, 
uh, even the handheld iterations, like I didn't really like Minish Cap. It was fine, but like Minish Cap was okay. The the Spirit game, the Spirit Tracks, and whatever the fuck the other one was with the, the stylus. On, I I can't play games like that. So like, I just feel like Zelda wasn't being made for me for a long time. And when I played A Link Between Worlds, which I enjoyed, I was like, okay, this is great. But this is I've been to this world. I know this world. Um, there's a nostalgic factor to this, but it again, where is Zelda? Like, where is the Zelda we need and we want? And I feel like, I feel like maybe this is that game. So I'm I'm optimistic about it. It brings back uh, a sense of wonder to Zelda of what is over that hill and I, you can mark anything and get there. So what will I find on that journey to that spot, which I think has been missing for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that uh, I, I like, I like the idea of them spreading their wings a little bit and making a different kind of Zelda game that I think is certainly going to be outside of their own comfort zone. And I think that's why this game has taken so long to make. And that could be why the game's so antiquated, not only because it's running on Wii U, which is super underpowered, but because it's been, it was, it's just been, it's been gestating for so long as well. So, um, you know, I, I'm I'm interested to see like what the final product's like. I'm interested to see how long it is and robust it is. Um, and uh, the one thing I'll say that I walked away from with this above all else is, and I don't know, I don't know a lot of people out there can relate because I don't know how many people have been in Nintendo at E3 and played games there. They need to like not be up your ass when you're playing games at Nintendo. Like that was actually like, my biggest takeaway is the actual experience of playing the game. No one did anything wrong. The people that I dealt with were very nice people. The man that was with me was a very nice man. That was how. But it's like. I've been playing games for 30 years almost like I'll figure it out like you're actually like putting a ton of pressure on me by standing over my shoulder and chattering in my ear and telling me what to do like just if you're going to give me all this time just go away like I'll figure it out like if I have a question I'll ask you you know and I felt I felt like it was a (laughs) I know this is a weird like insider gripe but it was just like I just played Horizon the day before and they like I figured it out like it took time but like I figured it out it was complex but and so that was, the, it made me not want to sit there and like really learn. Cause I'm like, this guy's judging me. He wants me to see certain things. I really just want to learn how to play the game myself. What I really learned about this new Zelda game too, is that it's super complicated. Like that, that was, that was the thing I, 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 and he wasn't really, he was trying to help me, but I was like, I could have just used a button map. That would have really been helpful to me. And but it was he there. Tell you about the wolf amiibo. He did. He put it on the screen. For me. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, um, you know, it was just like, let me just, can I just, I, I hope Nintendo takes notes about this. I'm sure they don't care. They don't care about anything, but, but like, you know, let me just play. And um, if I have a question, I'll, I'll ask you, I'm going to play the game my own my own way and learn the mechanics my own way. And I just feel like I felt so much pressure where I feel like I would have enjoyed it even more if I didn't feel like I was having this this person or these people around me, like watching me everything I did as if I was going to run away with the Wii U console or something like that. Well, someone you know? tried to. You see that? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. That's not the first time. I'm sure. Was it logic? It was logic. That was probably logic. So that was. So I. So that's just a minor inside gripe that I thought people would enjoy hearing because I. I just. I only experienced that at Nintendo. See, I um, feel like the only. Th- the only. The thing was that in that 15 minutes, do whatever you want. They were doing that to me too. And then when it was like you started the game, they backed off. I think they wanted you to get the mechanics down to an extent. Yeah, they so seemed mad at me. They were like, "All right, we'll go to the the theater first. I'm like, I don't want to do any of that. Can we like just go upstairs and just like sit me at a kiosk and I'll play the game? Like, I'll you know, I've played almost every Zelda game. I'll figure it out. Um, you missed the cool reveal though, because then the, the screen went away and they pulled up the thing and this door opened up and I'm like, wow. Yeah, it's just like we, we so we, we had scheduled. You had scheduled. People melted. You had kindly scheduled the things on our, our last day, and that wasn't in the original schedule. And I needed the time to do something else, so I actually had to go quickly anyway. I was yeah. only there for fifteen or twenty minutes, but so that was just my minor gripe. But I so my takeaways of Zelda is like, uh, I think it's pretty, regardless of the fact that it looks dated. I think that uh, the open world nature of it, although we've had open world Zelda since the very beginning, I think the open world very open world nature i think will provide its own density even though i think the game looks scarce i think there will be its own density there i think that if you looked at skyrim the same way you'll find that it's just as empty um it's just that there's little points of interest i don't think you have to have this flooded fucking field of things going on all the time so i agree with you there um and i'm really super intrigued by the complexity of the control scheme and the complexity of what you can do some of it makes sense some of it doesn't mapping sword for instance i think to a face button was weird but having and i'm sure you can remap things and having the, you? and having the arrow like you aim and shoot with the same button like there's certain things where I'm like this doesn't make any sense you have triggers you can use the you know so like I have to wrap my head around the way that they were doing things and I think I'm right about the sword things I think you draw it and, and slice it with the same things I think I kept like thinking I would hit. I was having I, I was like kept pulling shit out of my sack or whatever there were definitely buttons there that were weird that I was trying to do so, going to what naturally would be there so I think it. totally no problem at all playing I thought it felt great like any Nintendo game does it felt very intuitive to me and stuff oh and yeah I, and I, I also said that uh, pro controller compatible cool. yeah. So yeah that's why i'll good. play with because it didn't feel intuitive to me at all i think it would have if i spent more time with it and it was getting i was getting better at it i was also just kept worrying about the fucking y-axis over and over again so um 
so yeah, pretty game. I think it's open for a good reason. There's a lot of mechanics there and a lot of equipment and RPG elements that I think Zelda much much need. I think this is a revitalization that Zelda needs. I don't know that anyone's going to play it um, because it's going to be stranded on Wii U and we do not know the nature of NX and if anyone's going to be interested in buying it yet. I think that there might be interest. I think there might not be interest. So um, there'll be interest. So well, we'll see. We'll find out. Um, remember that Skyward Sword is the last console of Zelda and it didn't sell well. So um, and it was on its console with 100 million units. So um, they have much to prove here. I think a marketing blitz will be smart. I think that like letting people go hands on in Nintendo store and other places, EB will lose her mind. She's really excited about Zelda. So yeah, I was happy to play it. I was really honored to play it. It was cool. It was like a nice little reveal for me. I didn't expect that I was gonna have time to do it. So thanks for setting that up. No sweat. Um, but uh, yeah, also that little insider thing about, you know, just like, just leave me alone and let me, let me do my thing. Tell me I can put the wolf amiibo on there. I don't care. No one cares about amiibo <laughs> and that functionality. I'm excited to see what NX changes because I think that it can make a game that I'm already excited about even better. I think that it just if it gives me 1080, if it gives me 60, cool, because this was 720. And I think that that's an obvious thing. You know, they're showing this game and it is running on Wii U. So we're not going to get the the ultimate version of an ultimate experience of it. But I well, think if you had really, the NX right now and you had Zelda right now, you could take it with you on the plane. Who knows? With that little controller. The all set. I thought it looked great. I'm super excited about it. And it again, it. It looks like a simplified version of a lot of these games that I, I don't want to play because it looks like too much of an investment. But this looks like it has the dumbed down systems that I want to get into it where it's like it's not overwhelming in a bad way. It's hey, here's this. What's overwhelming is the the size and scope of it all. But it's things that I want to do. And it's not stuff that I feel like is chores to, to get done. Yeah, it's new. For, I mean, what's cool is that this is new for Zelda. You know, like this is a I still feel like the most open Zelda we ever had was the original. Mm -hmm. And um when you really think about it and get back to get down to gra uh, brass tacks and you don't think about Zelda in terms of its aesthetic or its its um, uh, its feel, but rather its scope, like the original Zelda was really super open and super nonlinear in its own way. Um, and I don't know that we've gotten that. We had that a little bit with Zelda 2, but not much. And we had that like a little bit with Link to the Past in the Dark World. And we had that a little bit with Ocarina of Time and a little bit with Majora's Mask. But like we never had this like massive like world where it's like we're not going to tell you or gate anything off like you'll figure it out like you could really go to almost any corner of the map in the original zelda if you wanted to as long as you had bombs and stuff like that so like i feel like this is the game this almost seems to capture the spirit ironically and interestingly of the original zelda which i think is a super fucking good game so well, I mean, that was the point yeah anuma was talking about how he that that one image the original image from the in, instruction manual from the first zelda like that was the total inspiration for this game and you can totally see it visually and just in terms of the the scope and the, the gameplay elements and all that stuff um and the they did an interview recently with reggie and he was saying that like, you can beat the game without even having much of the story elements at all and i think that's cool I, I like that it's just like do whatever the hell you want tell your own story um i also think that they're taking a lot of the classic zelda elements like bombs and stuff i don't know if you guys got to i guess you yeah. a bit but instead of just being the normal bombs that we know there's two different types of bombs one rolls with the whole physics based stuff another one is more square. of a square block that you just kind of put down like lays a trap for for when the enemies come by and stuff and it's just like little tiny tweaks like that i think really kind of flesh out the world and explain to you the type of direction that they want you to go but then let you go whatever direction you want i think that's the most important thing um i like being able to push the rocks and have it roll down the hill and like crush people and they teach you how to do that so that Later on, I'm sure in the game, there'll be much more advanced things where you get to play with the physics and all that stuff. Um, and in the same way that old Zelda's taught you, if there's a crack in a wall, bomb it. There's a secret in there. Anytime there's water and stuff, when you have the magnet, like already I know, search the water. There's probably some metal thing in there that I can pick up to complete a bridge that I can walk across to get a treasure chest and yeah. all that stuff. And I'm very, 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 very excited about this game. I gave it my one of my three game of the show free three. And I definitely think it'd be my top one overall of those three. Ooh. So stay tuned. Zelda X going to give it to you next up. Let's talk about the games that weren't at E3. Where the fuck was hot shots golf PS4? Mm. Why are you hiding it? Sony. Oh, I yeah. want it so bad, but yeah, no, I knew though. it wouldn't be there, but there are a lot of games missing for me. There, there was a lot of games. I got a list. I got a list for you guys. Well, first off hardware wise NX, we knew it wasn't going to be there, right. but it wasn't. And yeah. then PS Neo, which we thought would be there up until the last until moment. they were said until they officially there. announced it and then said it wasn't going to yeah. be there. So that stuff's kind of underwhelming. No Man's Sky. We expected that. We expected it because we've heard enough of No Man's Sky. Delayed till August 9th. Yeah. What's interesting, did you guys hear about the, the story of the that they almost had to change the name? Mm -hmm. Oh, right, because of the legal battle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that illegal battle with uh, a British 
telecommunications broadcast yeah, company, Sky. Sky, who also fucked with Microsoft in 2014 and SkyDrive had to be renamed OneDrive. It's like, damn, Everybody so sucks. Microsoft lost, but Sony won. So cool. There you go. No Man's Sky. Sean is. Murray won. Yeah. We won. Great. The, the gamers we won. won. Uh, but yeah, I guess we expected not to see that because it, it's soon enough and like beating that drum over. We've heard enough here. It's just starting to look like a failure if you keep talking about exactly. it every three. Last Guardian. Nino Kuni 2. Mm. Not I still think the game's way further out than people think, but I hope I'm I hope I'm wrong. Uh, but I don't. I still think that game's not this year. You think for we sure. get something? We get another touch at a uh, PSX? That'd be nice. Yeah, I think that TGS think probably. Too. Oh, TGS. Yeah. So that's the thing. When we go through this, let's think about when we think we're going to see it next, and when do we think it's actually going to mm. come out? The thing about TGS though, it did so much better in America. So when you want to hold it, you think for PSX with that audience that's rab- rabid about it? Yeah, maybe it did do much better in America, but I really? also think, it, yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, the game was like almost like not even relevant at all in Japan. Interesting. Um, Is that just relative to the other franchises over there? Or? It was racism. They didn't like drippy. No, I just think it didn't mm. sell very well. So they released it on PS3 and it, it sold okay. And they released like a dumbed down version on DS that or 3DS. So no, it was DS that that didn't sell well. And then so they released it here, I think, with no expectations. But I think we just took to it in a different way. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Drawn to death. Not a huge surprise. I think they have to they have to handle these sort of games better. Uh, the message they're showing these games way too much. I I really do believe that the constant streaming, beta, always in early beta, access, early access, this. like let's not stop talking about this game. Everything is a huge fucking mistake. And I think that hopefully they're realizing that at this point that the stuff coming out of Sony San Diego is cool, but like they're not managing it properly. You can't get them. You can't have the people playing it for two years and then expect them to give a shit when it comes out to get super excited about like, it. Yeah. I just don't understand like how that's lost on people mm-hmm. like, yeah, play it, play it endlessly in endless betas and then it's out. Aren't you excited? It's like, no, no one cares. We played it like seven it, thousand it wasn't, times. It wasn't hard to get into. It isn't hard to get to. Yeah. You can go to the drawn to death, drawn to death dot com. Get your code, mm-hmm. get in and start playing. But you're not getting trophies. I don't think. That's the other thing. I don't know what's yeah. happening really. With they them. need to do better with these games. Like we were talking about it on Colin and Greg live with guns up, which was, which came out and some people knew, but like, I don't know how the fuck we missed that. We, we missed that completely. Like, Oh, guns ups out. I guess I felt like guns up never came out or was always out. One of those two things. That was the thing is, yeah, <laughs> I felt like it was always out and that's the exact same problem. So like when they t- started talking about it at PSX and announced that it's coming out, we, we totally glazed over cause I've heard about guns up. If I wanted to play guns up, I'd go play guns up right now, yeah. but I don't want to play guns up. So I don't care about guns. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no newsworthy thing in there. There's nothing interesting about it. Uh, and that's the thing. Yeah. I'm not, again, dr- not surprising. I don't think that drawn to death wasn't there because it's one of those games that, that I think you're seeing, you saw with this E3, how Sony wants to handle it, where there is the mainstream big budget. Here's our E3 lineup. And then there's the, Hey, here's our PSX thing for everybody who cares about Vita. Yeah. Like if you're, a, if you're a hardcore enough PlayStation fan to fly around the world and come to San Francisco to, for PSX or go to Vegas for PSX, you're going to care about these games. You're going to care that mm-hmm. David Jaffe has a new game. And I'm not saying that no one will ever care about drawn to death or whatever, but it's just this weird messaging. Right I hope now. people do. Cause I think it looks cool. All I'm saying is that like, you know, they're releasing kill strain for instance in mid July. Um, and I'm like, that one feels everyone, like it was hasn't a- everyone played kill Strike? Like I, I, like I, it's a cool game, but like they're just not, you have to go away and finish the game and not, I understand they want feedback from the audience, but you are sacrificing the pop of releasing your game. I feel like kill strain had a there. better, it has a better shot than it. Guns up, I felt like it was beat to death over our head all the time. And then with Drawn to Death, you have Jaffe, who's an outspoken personality people follow, talking about it all the time because it's his game. I feel like Kill Strain's in that thing where, yeah, if I, if I really care about Kill Strain, yeah, I've seen the streams they do every week or whatever. But as somebody who doesn't really care about Kill Strain, I haven't seen it since we went down there and did that less, or, uh, stream with them. Hmm. What about Paragon? What's the story there? I It was announced at PSX. I, you know, it's yeah. not my type of game, so I totally stayed out of it. Was it released? This yeah, week? but it's it's out in early. It's the beta. God, it's always what I'm saying. Yeah. Give me the disc, Kevin. Hand me the disc over there. We have a disc for it. Or okay. I don't even know if that, it might just for it. it might just be an empty box. But that box will explain what we have. Thank oh, you, man. There is a disc in there. It's described as Paragon Essentials Edition. All right, and clones a lot of stuff. This is Paragon. Paragon. Paragon is a MOBA that puts you in fight of. Content includes para, Paragon coins, instant beta access, mm. five hero master challenges, five rep. So it's in beta still. They're but releasing a game on. There's no disc in here. Yeah, there is. It sounds like it. We gotta figure it out. <laughs> They're releasing a game in beta on disc. Yeah, there is. I thought it was like a card. That's fucking sad. Sorry. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking sad. Video games 2016. That's sad, sad stuff right there. Okay, cool. But it's over 100 yeah, dollars I mean, in value. Th- this is exactly what you're talking about. Where it's just like, all right, things announced and then. Things are in beta and alpha and this yeah. and that, whatever, early access, and then it comes out and no one cares. 
Yeah, it's because they're, these games are overexposed. It's not that these games are bad. Paragon's probably not a bad game. It's just that, like, the messaging's bad. Especially for console gamers. We're not used to this kind of stuff. You have to, you have to do better. Mm. Otherwise, you're sending these games out to die. I mean, sure. I wonder how it's doing. I wonder if there is a fan base that's, like, all over is. it. I mean, if it's just five one four out of fan base. I saw <laughs> it, 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 from the beta that's been going on forever. I always see when I go online, uh, Andrea Renee's playing it. Or she's was. all over it. She loves yeah, it. Yeah, but she is literally the only person I know. And mm. I will tell you that probably now that I've seen so much of uh, uh, over no Overwatch and Battleborn, but before that, you could put them all into a, into a screenshot gallery. And I, I, I still don't know what this game fucking looks like. Mm. I'm looking at the thing right here. And it just looks like generic fucking Halo guys and whatever action. I don't know what Paragon looks like because mm. their reveal trailer at PSX, which made me think it was a year out, <laughs> maybe more, was CG. I don't know what this fucking thing looks like, but the MOBA bubbles popped in terms of, oh, yeah, let's bring it to consoles. Oh, and let's absolutely. make money off MOBAs. That's no that poor bastards. Happen. If you're bringing your MOBA to fucking console in the next 18 months, don't bother. <laughs> So Colin, this one's for you. Dragon Quest Eleven. Yeah, I don't think you're going to see that at either. I mean, that's a that's a J Japanese game for a Japanese audience that will get here eventually um, if we're lucky. Uh, so I, I would expect to see more of that at TGS. And Dragon Quest is so huge that it's going to get its own events and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Going along that line of the JRPG stuff, Kingdom Hearts Three. We knew we weren't going to get it because we saw the 2.8 trailer and it ended saying more information winner. So we're going to get it once. Kingdom Hearts 2.8 comes out. We'll, we'll hear sure. more about Kingdom Hearts 3. And also, you can assume they want to give 15 some Yeah, give 15 some, some breathing room. Not hearing good things about 15, by the way. And uh, you, just the rumors online, like persistent rumors from, you know, what people think are reliable sources, whatever it is. <laughs> Games. No Ooh. moss? Is yeah. it Goofy again? Is Goofy giving us uh, the information? I'll be, I'll be, I'm super interested to see if any of the shit that you're he we're hearing about Final Fantasy 15 is true. Because it's not good. But uh, I still believe. But who knows? Who knows for sure? I'm. I'm. Ho I hope it's good. Kevin, me too. Uh, really, Kingdom Hearts three wasn't there because it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. um. Kingdom Hearts three. <laughs> it definitely. See two point eight. I'm like, all right. There's the engine. They're We're almost it. there. We are. We're at two point eight. Colin, how's that make you feel? <laughs> two point eight was awesome. By the way, got to play it. Super stoked about that. December. I feel bad for Kingdom Hearts fans. I don't know why. We're getting stuff. As a non Kingdom Hearts fan, what is two point eight? Is it what collection of shit is it now? Two point eight is the three DS game. Uh huh. Plus. A CG movie that tells like the earliest story of the whole thing to prep you for three plus it's a new thing that's birth by sleep point two which is in the Kingdom Hearts 3 engine that's a sequel to the PSP okay. game yes yeah, so yeah I remember that the PSP game a prologue right going into Kingdom Hearts 3 that's what they had playable at E3 okay and that's awesome great I get to play it's essentially like ground zeros sure to okay. the Phantom Pain okay so I'm like all right now cool. speak my language getting some Kingdom now Hearts you're 3. selling me on it sold totally sold on that shit Final Fantasy 7 remake I totally thought we were going to see some trailer or something. I understand it's years out, but I still thought, I mean, that's just, it's such an easy, like cheap pop. Yeah. You know, just PSX, they had way more than I thought they would show. Totally expected them to just keep throwing a little bit more. But again, Sony's conference was so strong that they didn't need it. Right. Save but, for PSX again. Yeah. Here's another five seconds from this game. That's five years out. Yeah. And they, they speaking on Final Fantasy seven remake. They're saying that next time they talk about, they want to have a bit more substantial, things to talk about so. sure as See in like you know the people that are working on the game know that they're doing it hopefully they have that in order this time when they when they talk about the game mm -hmm. that was still the funniest thing i'd ever fucking heard in my life i love that square's so weird what a weird company the yeah. japanese like publisher developer arm is like starting to scare me a little bit to be honest dreams no, not a huge surprise. Dreams, no one knows what it is. So it's, it's. I think, and I think that Media Molecule and Sony have heard the message loud and clear. Um, from us. From a lot of people. That <laughs> no one knows what the hell this game is and uh, you need to go make it now. And they were saying, I mean, and they were saying, and they were saying the same thing like the, at, at GDC that like they were so concentrated on making the tools that they're going to make the game with the tools, but they hadn't even made it as of GDC. So, you know, like people are going to get tired of seeing this game. If the, and so they it's have like to, No Man's have, Sky. Damn, what the fuck? And okay. they, they have to manage it in such a way that um, that be, that, that it will get that special pop that it needs. I assume you'll see it at E3 next year. I assume that's a fall 2017. Yeah, I, don't think, you think, ugh, I guess, but I don't know if you'll see it at E3. I mean, maybe when it's finally ready to go and roll, sure, but they're going to fa face the same problems, right? Alex talked to GDC about them wanting to do a beta this year. And was, or maybe that was at PSX even, but it's going to be the same thing of like dream is that and everybody's going to be like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. I, I mean, I still, my, my take is still like they showed it to us and I appreciate the art artistic nature of the studio and they make good games and they know what they're doing. But, but, uh, think this was a huge mistake 
Like, I, I think this is going to end up being a big mistake for them. I hope, and I hope I'm wrong, but I just don't see how this even fits, like, into what PlayStation's trying to do. Like, what is the game? What is, why would I want to play it? I understand it more now that they showed it to me, but it didn't make me want to play it anymore. Mm. It's, it's old PlayStation. It's PlayStation 3, where PlayStation 4 is, if you're going to talk about exclusives and stuff, it's everything you saw at E3. We're going to focus on these narrative-driven, mostly third-person, here is this game you can wrap your head around and what it is, whereas this is very much still, it's PlayStation 3. We're toying around with things. We're doing different ideas. We're making art. Vita. Just Vita in general? Just Vita. I got a point off that. I knew that wasn't going to be there. First, uh, first, um, for at the Sony booth, first E three since two thousand eleven that uh, so that e, uh, that Vita was not at Sony's booth at all. Mm. Again, save for PSX. That's where that audience is. Why waste the time now? Why waste the show show floor space now? Just have people come by and go, oh, oh Vita games. I don't care about these. Yeah. Deep down, I don't think Deep Down exists anymore. I played Deep Down. Um, in, this is the Capcom one, right? Yeah, in two thousand. 14? 13 is when it was first shown. Yeah, I think I played in 2014 um, with a, a Japanese woman who at the at TGS uh, standing next to me that had no idea what I was saying or doing, which is not a huge surprise because she didn't speak English. Um, I, I feel like that game uh, just doesn't is never going to come out and doesn't really exist. Like, I, I, I don't know. I could be wrong. I haven't read anything about it recently, but I just don't know. It wasn't even that interesting when I played it at all. So I don't know. We'll see. But I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if you never saw that game. Dead Island 2. No, that, that just changed hands. I yeah, mean, I was going to say that they thing have a lot exploded of work on the hot plate, and now they're trying to put it back together with a new, or, you know, a new team is coming at it. So, yeah, I know. Beyond Good and Evil 2 wasn't <laughs> at E3, but right after the Ubisoft press conference, our boy Eves Gimo Eves Gimo confirmed that it is happening. Yeah. Still alive, and that the original creator, Michael Ansel, is working on it. I mean, okay. the Ubisoft show was such a, a tight two hours that you just couldn't fit another announcement in I don't in think there. that you could have These fit guys, the thing that people cared about in there at all. So there's an awesome story I think Jason Try wrote on Kotaku about all the times that they promised that Beyond Good and Evil 2 is happening. Going back to like 2009 or something like that. The game, who, first of all, who who wants this game? Like, I, I, like Beyond Good and Evil is fine. I had it on Xbox, the original Xbox, and it was fine. Like, do we really need another Beyond Good and Evil? And then, so this Michelle Ancel guy... Uh, is not working at UB, but is working at UB. He's working on that game Wild. Oh, yeah? Wild's the other game. So, like, I'm like, I don't know that you're getting any, literally any of these games, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going, there's something weird going on with that guy and Ubisoft, because he did the Rayman games, like the Revival Rayman games that were really good, I think. I think he was the director on those games. Um, and they were great. They were amazing. But I, I think that, um, Something's amiss with Beyond Good and Evil 2, and he's not even at Ubisoft in a full-time capacity, I don't think, because he's doing that game Wild, which is not a Ubisoft game. Mm -hmm. So, and people are asking about that, like, where's Wild? And I'm like, I don't... Don't hold your breath. Don't hold your <laughs> breath for that one either. Just like you shouldn't have held your breath for what was that other game that was canceled? From um, Tequila Works. Rhyme. Mm. So, although they're apparently took it back and they're going to make it, so I don't know, who cares? But when it's, Sony walked in and took their development kit, so like, all right, you're done. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know Beyond Good and Evil Two. Like, I'll that's a game that is a game that I'll believe it when I see it. Like when it's out, I'll believe it. We'll see. Beyond Good and Evil, I feel like is right up your alley, though. It's a good. It's a good. Game. I, I agree that it's like it's it's one of those weird games where it seems like people want it a lot more than I think it's the like, number of people actually do. It's like Mirror's Edge Two. How similar. bad did you? Very really vocal it? group wants it, and it comes out. Just, yeah. <laughs> Crackdown 3. That, that was, was surprising. Surprise. That, that was, was really surprise. surprising. I'm ready for Crackdown. I'm excited for Crackdown. And yeah, you'd think it would be there, but shows how far out that game is. I assume. Yeah, delayed to 2017. Rumored to be at Gamescom. Yeah, I'm sure so. it'll be a game. I was going to say, like, they have to manage the Gamescom kind of shit, too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. A lot more shows to show stuff at. And CD Projekt Red said Cyberpunk 2077 wouldn't be there. Yeah. But that's... They made so much money out. that I don't know that they're not going to disappear for a little while. They and had Gwent, bro. Gwent was cool. there. Mm. Looks pretty cool. Gwent's coming out party. Um, but uh, shout out to everybody who says they ripped off my face for that one character. Yeah, Cyberpunk. Weird. Cyberpunk will come out when it's ready, and I think that they've earned the right to do that. Um, and uh, have certainly made the money to be able to afford to do that. That's as well. years though away. Everybody needs to get realistic expectations right quick on that fucking game. Red Dead Three. No, I don't know why anyone thought this game was going to be announced. I have there no, was I a ton of rumors, man. I mean, it, I, we all know the Rockstar E3 thing, but like there was a lot 
going into it where people really thought this shit was going to be there. Yeah, I just don't. I just never believed it. I just was like, why would why would Rockstar ever do that? Right. That, that, like that made no sense to me. Like they'll announce it themselves. When do you think that'll happen? I still feel like that game's coming out this fall. I was, like, I, I, yeah, that's the thing. I could easily see the announcement within the next month and a half, two months for this them. fall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God, that'd be fucking cool. I still feel like they'll announce it. Like they could announce it in August and release it in November. Something like that. Even early, maybe August and release in October. Something like I that. think before this year's, I don't know. I'm not so bully on them actually getting it out to shelves in the fall, but I think before this year's over, you're definitely going to hear the announcement and it's mm-hmm. going to be spring of next year. Last one here. Telltale's Marvel game. We heard about it a bazillion years ago, and then we right. heard nothing about yeah. it. And it's like I get that they're focusing Walking Dead, Batman, but, but yeah. Telltale's always been that type of thing where it's like it doesn't matter. If they're doing a whole bunch at once. I wouldn't be surprised though if it is something to do with just maybe a deal somewhere with the DC Marvel thing about how they promote and when they promote right. and where these things are. And that's the other thing of just like, all right, cool. So Batman's this standalone thing and it's going or whatever. The Marvel universe though, and the, the digital part of the thing too, they've talked about wanting to work in tandem with the movies better, right? I, we know now, I, I shouldn't say, because I had to argue this point, that there's no way that Spider-Man game was going to be tied into the Spider-Man movie. They've confirmed that now. But I don't. I think Telltale is actually somewhere where it could fit of like, let's work it in. So you have to look down the line of what what movie would that work with? Is it the next Avengers? Do we put it out? I mean, I don't have the slate in front of me and you know, I'm not I'm not as up on it. It's not going to be Doctor Stranger. You would have already announced it. Yeah. Uh, when's Guardians 2? Is, Gar- is it going to be... Year. Is it going to be a Guardians thing one day? Like, there's a million ways it could slice up and go. But if, and then of course, maybe it's none of that. Maybe it's a Venom game. That's just a thing that they're doing. That you know what I mean? There, there's the thing about it is there's just so much to do with that Marvel brand that it could go anywhere. But I could see them being one of the developers to jump in and actually make a movie tie-in game that doesn't suck. Right? Mm-hmm. Let's fill in the gap of something somewhere. Yeah. But again, it could easily be we're doing our own. Here's a Fantastic Four thing. Yeah. Oh man. I hope not. I know, but I'm, I'm just saying like, that's the thing. I, it doesn't surprise me. Telltale is this brand. That's everything. But at E3, they need to focus on the next thing, which yep. is Batman. That's the summer. Absolutely. So speaking of focusing, Greg, focus on me, focus on cooking. Cause you can now oh. thanks to blue apron, blue apron. They make home cooking accessible. They deliver you all these recipes. You can make all this different stuff. Your first three free. If you use the promo code, I'm about to tell you later. We're talking variety here. New recipes are created each week by Blue Apron's culinary team and are not repeated within a year. We're talking flexibility, Greg. Customize your recipes each week based on your preferences. Choose delivery options to fit your needs. There's no weekly commitment, so you only get deliveries when you want them. So for Kevin, it's all the time. He's a <laughs> he gets a delivery all the time. <laughs> it's easy. You fat little man. Each meal comes with a step by step, easy to follow <laughs> recipe card and pre portioned <laughs> ingredients that can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. So you're asking me, Greg, what are the meals available in June? I can tell you right oh. now. Creamy shrimp fettuccine with sauteed green beans and spinach. I'm all over that. That's a good one. Sweet chili chicken with Tinkerbell peppers. Ooh. Okay. Green beans and jasmine rice. You're giving me jasmine and Tinkerbell in one thing. Sign me up, Blue Apron. The Disney Sign dish. me up. Spice steak and tomato avocado salad with creamy cone cabbage and red onion slaw. That's a lot of words, but I'm in. Yeah. Cool. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. They know that when you cook with incredible ingredients, you make incredible meals. So they set the highest quality standards for their community of suppliers. Family-run farms. There's a lot of words here that I, I'm not even going to try to read. Fisheries and ranchers. Whether well, it's Japanese ramen noodles, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, heirloom tomatoes. Blue Apron's bringing you the best of those heirloom tomatoes. Greg. Heirloom. Heirloom tomatoes. Heirloom, heirloom tomatoes. See, I'm trying. I'm trying. We're, we're right. happy to see you try. Know. We're happy, happy to see you try. Help me. <laughs> All right. Here's the deal. You check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash funny. All right? Yeah. Just funny. Cool. Then you'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash funny. Blue Apron. A better way to cook. Build it beautiful. Build it beautiful. Real talk. Blue Apron's awesome. I used it for a long time. Yeah, I was going to say things. that. I was going to say, like, I, I've heard good things about Blue Apron yeah. for sure. Is that right? Well, here you uh, go. Kevin's you chiming with something. I really think it'd be funny to do an unboxing where he has to cook it. Tim does? Blue oh thing, yeah. God. It's easy. I it, know, but he's real bad at cooking. I don't even think I, he just screwed this up. That. No, I do. You've never seen me cook. I, I bet he's Not known once. you your entire You've life. Seen me cook. Yeah, and he's never seen me cook. I don't. Cook. I mean, he considers like making cereal cooking. I'm damn good at that shit. He's very good at it. 
the other How hard is it? You pour, pour the cereal into There's a, a cup balance. and you drink, this, you eat the cup. You eat the cup. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as always, this final topic brought to you by Patreon. So shout out to you, Steven Insler. You're the Patreon producer of this month and pretty much every month forever. Yeah. You're, you're he continues to sit there and do it. He's awesome. And I love you and support you. As I look into Greg's eyes. Thank you. I love look, in, look into my eyes, but, but feel Colin, Colin and smell Kevin. No, I don't want to smell Kevin. Think about Nick. I please not. Oh, I'm thinking about I Nick. I don't smell that. Mm, it's debatable. No, it's not. It's Which not. part right. of it's you? It's not debatable. Oh. I found out yesterday his balls are really hot. You got them hot balls? Yeah. I came in. I came the thing in. And he, of course, shoves everything as close as he came to the door. So then I was like, I'll give him. I'll, this is what he wants, clearly. So I sat on him and then I rubbed my butt around on him. And I was like, oh, man, Ooh, your gross. balls are hot. <laughs> Damn. That's fucking erotic. I we went to Starbucks today and he got one of those chorizo sandwiches. Yeah. Which are good, but I can't stand them. And I've realized today why is because of the smell. The smell smells like Kevin. Nope. And I don't like it. it he smells like me. chorizo? And then he's. No, the, the Starbucks chorizo. I don't know that it's real. I love chorizo. chorizo. I'm going to smell Kevin yeah, more. It's good. But you uh, smelled my armpit. And he's like, oh, it smells like sweat. And I'm like, oh. Kevin smells like sweat. I don't. That's a lie. I get it. Remember he doesn't you smell like BO. There's a difference. Armpit? It's I not don't. the BO. It's I believe it. Like this? You smell it and you're like, damn, you smell good. I think. Let's play Didn't live, happen. maybe. Don't okay. believe it. All right. This topic. All right. Of course. Brought to you by Patreon. All the Q&A. All that stuff. This one's brought to you by Prometheus and Bob over the Kind of Funny forums. If you have a topic for us, go to gamescast. Nope. Kindoffunny.com slash gamescast topic. Leave your questions, just like my boy Prometheus and Bob did. It's a long one, but a good one. Wait, hold on. Kevin's like frantically pointing around and grabbing his phone all frustrated. Oh, and the Patreon people. Thank you very much. <laughs> Didn't know we were doing that today, but cool. You're you're awesome. You make things happen. You get Kevin eating them chorizo sandwiches that I love smelling so much. Since we're putting a bunch of screen, we're doing a bunch of stuff right here at the front. Uh-huh. Kevin, put a frog face on me for the next five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. That, Colin. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a bad dream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Prometheus and Bob ask, is Marvel about to take over the gaming world? Huh? Last week, Polygon spoke to Marvel Games Vice President Jay Ong and asked him if Marvel vs. Capcom fans would finally get some relief from his team, either in the form of a new game or a balance patch. His response was vague, but optimistic. There's nothing we can say at this time. Let's just say that we hear that a lot. We love our fans and we certainly want to please them. Beyond that, we can't say anything at this time, but who knows what the future holds. Marvel Games has a lot of things in the works, quite a few in the console space that are unannounced. What has been announced is a game set in the Marvel Universe from Telltale Games and a new Spider-Man from Insomniac Games for PlayStation 4. What do you guys think? The answer is yes. This goes back to, I've I've said it a lot this past week, but to bring you all up to speed, this goes back to you and I going to see Age of Ultron at that screening and Bill Roseman coming out and being like, what's up? I'm in charge of Marvel Games. Here's the two other guys who are doing this. We are out to make awesome games. We have not done that in a long time. We are aware of our shortcoming. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. We are out to fix this and make Marvel a force to be reckoned with in the video game industry the way it is right now in movies as it is on Netflix as it is on TV. And at the first that was when they announced the Telltale game where I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. And now they're announcing this Insomniac game. And I think it's interesting because Insomniac for some reason to me means more than the Telltale one, but they're the exact same level of let's take our properties that we care about and give them to the people that make the best kind of games for those things Mm -hmm. and this is it didn't i didn't understand the connection until disney infinity died and they're like we're getting out of this we're not going to do this anymore and then it was like it clicked of like oh marvel was just ahead of that in terms of like okay cool we're not going to just go to activision and say here's a multi-year deal if you get a game out every nine months all right great cool and then Beanox is making spider-man for spider-man for spider-man let's start really good and then go to garbage yeah exactly Mm -hmm. and so yeah, I think we're just to the tipping point right now where you're about to see, all, and when I say about to see, I mean announcements you're about to see of all this start to pay off. What they, So far, we know Spider-Man, and that's it really, right? We know that something's happening at Telltale. We just talked about in the last topic. No idea what it is, but you figure if that's happening... What are the be- what? Are, think about the other best, you know, uh, developers that are making third person action games, first person, whatever. And what could that apply to a Marvel property? Mm-hmm. Where does Iron that Man. go? Like, imagine an Iron Man game that's good. Yeah. There's so much potential there. Yeah, hundred percent. The flight and all that stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for all this. I I do kind of simultaneously worry, and I'm super excited for a world where there's a shit ton of Star Wars games and a shit ton of superhero games right. where all of the top developers are just making these games. But right. it's like whatever, as long as they're good. And that's the thing. As long as if, if they take it to the way Star Wars has, where it's like, all right, cool, we have this property, we're gonna give it to a bunch of developers, but we want them to be great. Like, I mean, think about like. I know it's a long shot and I can't imagine it would have happened, but you know, like again, Rocksteady isn't owned by WB. 
So like, what if, oh, man. what if there's a conversation going on over there of them taking on Iron Man or some other, I mean, a Daredevil game, whatever, mm-hmm. that'd be insane. And that would be a game immediately that everybody's like, yep, on board with a thousand percent. Yeah. What about, what do you think, Colin? I don't know. I don't mean, so other than I think that the proper, ma- the, it, the proper management of expectations and with games with Rock City and DC showed and Warner Brothers showed that you can get great games that aren't tethered to movies specifically and people yep. still care about them. I think Marvel runs way more of a risk in the movie in every realm of oversaturating. And so um, like, I think you have to be very careful with the things you choose to do and the developers you choose to do, especially because the gestation period of games is way longer um, than it is with a TV show or with, even with a movie. So, um, so you have to just make sure you're setting the seeds properly in a way that makes the most sense. But I think that you'll see more from them. Um, in the AAA space from developers that you know. And I think that's a smart thing to do. I would love to see a games universe, a Marvel games universe. Sure. It's not tied to the movies or the comics or whatever, but the Spider-Man game is related to Telltale games, is related to whatever else we got out there. Well, see, that's that what's really interesting cool. from the, la- the previous topic we were talking about, right? And the fact that, like, we're talking about, yeah, the gestation period's so long, right? Telltale can move quicker. Does that mean they're working on something different than what uh, Insomniac's working on with Spider-Man? Exciting times. Go to the best people, give them the best stuff. Ron Dean Barron says, I had bought Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein, the next order at launch and quickly grew bored of it. Sorry, it's all inverse. Uh, I was very disappointed. Recently, I decided to pick it up again and realized I had just needed to get through the awful beginning to oh, experience yeah. one of 2014's best games. My question is, have you ever been unhappy with the game, but then loved it after going back years later? Years? I don't know if it's ever been. I, um, I remember the, the best example in this not even a great example is I played a whole bunch of Red Dead and then got to Mexico. I was like, Mexico's fucking boring and left. And then I remember and the, usually when that happens, especially nowadays, if I leave a game, I'm never coming back, even if I have the best intentions of coming back. And I did come back to Red Dead and I did get through it. And then it got awesome again. I thought personally, hmm. Final Fantasy six took a lot for me. Yeah, I remember I started it and it was, you know, I played 10 first and then I went back to seven and then I played six. And for some reason, I, I played the first couple hours and I was just like, mm, not for me. And then, like years later, I'm back and now it's one of my favorites. Uh, Metroid Prime was similar too, where I've started that game probably six times before I actually went through mm-hmm. and beat it all. Excellent game. Yeah, I don't know. I can't think of anything off the top of my head because I move so quickly that I rarely go back. Um, the last game I remember trying to go back to was Final Fantasy X, and it didn't work out so well. So it's not quite the story he's talking about. But I told you, you just gotta get through that intro in Wolfenstein, and it's and then you're, you're, you're and then you're golden. SSJ Davy says. Hey, Tim and the coolest dudes in video games. When PlayStation All-Stars were announced, everyone hated on it for being a Smash Bros. clone, even though it didn't play like Smash at all. My question is simple. Why don't Sony just rip off Smash property and say fuck it to the haters? Crash Team Racing did it to Mario Kart, and dare I say it, Crash Team Racing is better. So why not just coat Smash with PlayStation characters and let the great gameplay of Smash mix with PlayStation characters? Yeah, why That's what I'm saying. Why didn't it's too, they do it's that? too late. Yeah, no, 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 the ship's out of the port now, but back in the day. <laughs> I mean, that it was earlier in the first time we were talking about Mighty Number no. 9. It's like, that's the problem. Is like, it's Smash, but it's not Smash. I wanted to like PS Battle Royale more than anybody. Great, give me more Smash. And then you play it and you're like, this isn't it. It's not even almost there. It's just like pretending to be almost there. And I was like, damn, man. And there's no crash in that. Come on, step your goddamn game up. Now it would happen in 2016, Crash would be there. He'd be hanging out and everybody would be happy about it. And, and you're Kevin right. Crash Team Racing is better than Mario Kart. We fucking said it. Damn. It is. Not Everyone Double Dash. That. Oh, it's better than Double yeah. Dash. Absolutely. Chuck says, hey guys, I'm a big user of my local library. It's how I read all the Walking Dead, Saga, and Invincible. While searching for my next read, I came across Call of Duty Black Ops 3. I put a hold on it, and a week or two later, it was ready for pickup. I have now put Quantum Break on hold as well. As someone who creates art, I'm a performer at the Second City, I know what it's like to not always get paid for what you create. I feel a bit conflicted. Is it a dick move to consume someone's work without paying for it? Thanks, and I appreciate your hard work. Well, he's doing it the right way. I mean, it's a library. It's not like he's pirating out of the games. You figure there's... A barrier to entry for that. He has to put it on hold. He has to wait. The library only has one copy of Black Ops or something. One copy of Quantum Break. There's a difference there in terms of like somebody who goes up and like the whole entitlement. Well, I bought too many games this month. I can't afford another one, but I can go just download this game illegally and play it forever and be done with it. Uh, I mean, I think when he's not in the financial situation he is now, you pay it forward and you buy more stuff, right? That's what we always talk about where it's like, yeah, 
90% of the games we get are free. So like when I do see something that I want and I, we're not getting it early, I'll go buy it. When I do, see, when I play a game and I'm not even sure if I'll ever get to what I want in the season pass, but I've enjoyed the game like the Witcher, I'll buy the season pass out of my own pocket. You know, like it's my way I feel of contributing back to it. Mm-hmm. The system that we're yeah, in. That's my thing with physical games. It's like usually we'll get the code or whatever, but I'm like, I want to buy this and I want the physical ones. So yeah, I get that. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's, Obviously, money is very important, but when these people that are making art want you to enjoy the art, I think first and foremost, at least a lot of them, depending on who it is. Sure. But I mean, I think we're a perfect example, right? Like I wouldn't call what we do art, but we are creating something and we put everything out for free, you know, in some way, shape or form eventually. Sure. And I think it's like, if you want to pay, pay, but otherwise just enjoy and spread the word. I think that there definitely is a value in liking something and telling people you like it and going from there. You even writing in talking about this, is a good way to do that. You know, you think it's it, kind of spreading your enjoyment. The analog to him taking games out of the library is taking books out of the library, which has been happening forever where you could go and buy that book and you know, it, great. You get it money, do this. They make more books, more second edition. Da, da, da. I think it's in the same field where if we're, if the library is meant to house works of art, you know, pieces of pop culture, or whatever, then this is fine. Tom Rosati says, Tom Rosati, hey Tom Rosati. Hey guys, first time posting. Just want to hear your thoughts on talks of the Vivendi takeover of Ubisoft. Do you feel it could hurt Ubisoft or help them? As much flack as Ubisoft gets, they make some really great games and allow for their smaller studios to create games like Valiant Hearts and Grow Home. Yves Gamont seems to be a very passionate CEO and losing him seems like it would hurt the company as well. Also, that new Ghost Recon looks hella fun. Fuck yes, Thanks. it does. Keep on being kind of is. funny. Yeah, you risk, whenever you go public, you risk hostile takeovers, so that's just inherent. It doesn't often happen, but... It does happen. And if they're taken over by another company, things are obviously going to change for them. Um, I think you'll just have to pay attention to how things change at Gameloft since that has already been taken over by Vivendi. Um, you also have to remember that Vivendi was in this space before with Activision um, and Blizzard, right? And in 2011, yeah. 2012, and they didn't it didn't seem to pan out too well for them. So um, I don't know that their partners that Ubisoft wants. Clearly, they don't want them, um, but they're going to probably get them. So um, It's fascinating yeah. to watch. I do think that it'll change what Ubisoft is because there'll be new people at the helm and it'll be what is the most important thing. I don't think the games that are on the slate now you have to worry about, but you do have to worry about leadership changeover, people leaving, being forced out. What do you think it means for Beyond Good and Evil 2? I, th- I hope somebody walks in like, no, nobody wants this. <laughs> Final question comes from Mick Biscuits. Mick Biscuits. 8675. Hey guys, what's your opinion on the majority of PlayStation's big exclusives being third person action games? The Uncharted series and The Last of Us are amazing and very successful, but now most of their IP seems to be very similar. Days Gone, uh, you know, Horizon, blah, blah, blah. My favorite type of game, so I'm all for it. Go yeah, for it, it. Is, it is weird, but like, what else are we going to have? Like, the per- only other perspective. The valid perspective in these shooty shooty boom boom kind of games is shooty shooty boom boom games first person shooters and they do those too with Killzone although we haven't gotten one recently I think that that's just the way a lot of games are played these days so they're not all the same like Days Gone and Horizon are open world role playing games uh, God of War is a more linear tighter action game um, The Last Guardian is not a third you know person Detroit Become game. Human Detroit, is not yeah. going to give you the action experience so I think that like you just have to kind of get a little deeper into the genetics of the games as opposed to just uh, looking at them aesthetically, yeah, they're all third person. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. You're going to mm-hmm. see second party partnerships like everything that happens with Housemark bring you the arcade titles that are side scrollers or, you know, whatever, 2.5 D. Yeah, Matterfall. Yeah. Yep. It'll be there. Don't worry. There you go. And Paragon is there right now in beta access. No Ladies one can tell you anything about the game, though. This has been the first ever episode 74 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. Thank you very much for joining us. We will see you next week. This has been fun. Like, I have never seen any of these characters. You got Jax over here with his red arms, Scuba Man. Let this just looks like the, this looks like the Overwatch gorilla, but in a red outfit. Yeah, it kind of does look like Winston. I'm a nerd now. Deal with it, Greg. Hit me up on PSN at Tim Gettys.